can a car company really revolutionize medical care? Well, it turns out that it can. Virginia Mason's clinic in Kirkland, Washington is applying something called the Toyota production system to the medical industry. It's a model that focuses on improving efficiency and reducing waste. When applied to a primary care clinic, it totally transforms the business of making people healthy. Hi. Hi. The way the patients check in. Good to see Dr. Fittinger. The way the clinic's laid out, how supplies are handled, how records are kept, and new state-of-the-art software, they've all made the system more efficient. It's a well-oiled machine with the ultimate goal of increasing safety and providing better outcomes for patients. When they come off the elevator, it's not like the usual place. They see a mural that depicts the past into the current of Virginia Mason visually. And then there are a series of desks that are not like usual reception desks. And at that desk, they simply confirm their identity and they get a placard that shows the region of the building they're going to. Patients don't understand north, south, east, and west once they're inside. So we name them for biomes, mountain, meadow, forest, beach. And uh, they get a room assigned and affixed to that placard, which is a very nice uh, laminated photo, um, they get an RFID device, which now tells us their location. What we added to that system called the Versus system was the tracking of time. So we can track how long we make them wait. Our whole goal is to reduce weights because they're waste and uh, they don't make anybody happier or healthier. So this is a little RFID chip in the badge that kind of follows them on their journey through your clinic. Everyone in the clinic who works there is uh, wearing a transmitter, including the EKG machine. You must know where it is at all times. And the transmitters in the ceiling are uh, mapping it out through software that appears on our monitors while we work. And also, there's sort of a graphical interface that you use, which actually maps, if you will, the movement of everything in your clinic. Yes. Well, let's, let's take a look at that and tell okay. me a little bit what you're seeing. Well, there's, there's the um, floor plan map of the clinic, and you can see that green rooms are ready to use. Yellow rooms are uh, not ready to use. There's either someone in there, or it's almost got someone in it, and the black rooms are uh, dirty and need cleaning. Um, you can also see the little figures moving around, the stethoscope moving around as a provider. You can see the little um, purple uh, patient, and you can also see the medical assistants in blue, and you can also see in the laboratory there's an icon for the EKG machine, like I mentioned. So you can find somebody you need to talk to by looking at the map uh, and just walk over there and talk. So many primary care clinics today are, are really struggling. The overhead is horrendous. Uh, you know, the doctors will say, if I can just get more time with my patients, or if I can get more throughput, or frankly, if I could just get more time to go home at the end of the day mm -hmm. without all the hassles. Um, what I'm hearing from your doctors is, is really a, almost a joy of a patient practice again. Well, all the time we don't spend face-to-face -face with patients is potentially a waste of time. Um, we divide care into two two kinds of care, direct care, you and me face-to-face, -face. indirect care, the care of the information about your recent visits, um, things we've agreed about that we're going to do in the future and I don't even see you, we just exchange information. And that indirect care is, we think, what is not yet redesigned enough to get the waste out and save money. So we've put a lot of effort in that to get that out of what's been traditionally a batch production modality to a flow production modality. And you know, a few years back, I spent some time at the Disney Institute, and as I looked at the video of your new clinic, um, you're, you're really kind of into this on stage, off stage kind of scenario that, that, that keeps the patient experience on stage, and yet there's all this stuff going on in the halls behind the scenes that really speeds up the flow and improves the experience. Yeah, in the map there, the perimeter was the, um, the production environment, we call it. We actually call it a beehive. And it has our flow stations in it where our flow manager actually gives the provider direction about what to do about indirect care as soon as he or she comes out of a room from direct care. And if I don't pay attention to that, I will start to batch it up and avoid doing it, stay by myself after work and do it, present her with a huge batch in the morning that gets in the way of her starting her work. And what Toyota basically found was that if you build fuel injectors in a huge batch when half of them haven't even been ordered, it will cost more than if you built them just when they were ordered. So as each little piece of information comes in. She assembles them in a prioritized little bundle. I do two or three of them in between each patient visit, and then and only then do I go in the exam room. If I take direction from her, our costs go down, our time with the patient is preserved. That's what we're mainly after. Now, I've also seen you using some software that anticipates the patient visit and all the things that need to be done in a very proactive way. 
Well, this is the mistake proofing part. Um, mistakes in medicine are different than mistakes in assembling a fuel injector. So you really can't get an appointment, you can't get roomed for a visit, and you can't have a visit without everyone checking what's called the health maintenance module, which knows by your age, your gender, and the conditions you do or don't have, what tests or interventions you might be due for, overdue for, or is the result, the last result we got, out of range and needs to be improved. And this makes prevention and disease management everybody's business.